Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are going to attempt to see if we can't get a 1965 Buick Riviera running for the first time in like a decade. I don't even really know. Story on this thing was this summer when it was much, much warmer, although spring kind of is here. I saw an ad on the old Bookface Marketplace, went up somewhere by like Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Pick this thing up. Uh, a nice gentleman that had the thing said he purchased some property or cleaned up some property and this car was there. He didn't know a ton about it. He said he had it running a few years back. I don't know how long that means, uh, but he says now it's locked up, which I can't see how it would be locked up, but that's our luck. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that. Hopefully it's just a starter because we're real good with that. Got a lot of experience anyway. We loaded this thing up, brought it home. It's like eight months later, and now we're gonna see if we can't get this thing running for the first time. Before we get started, jump on over to Mortski.com, get yourself some Mortski swag. We got ball caps, we got the uh, Cinco de Drinko competition coming up for the dirtiest hat. We're gonna give away some good prizes on that. You got till uh, the 5th of May to get your cap all dirty, so get yours now. You got, uh, you got about three months left, so hurry up and get on that. We got sweatshirts we got t-shirts we got fender covers if you got a really nice riviera like this one get yourself a fender cover those things are super 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 nice we got screwdrivers we got banners we got decals we got super scrapers on hand those of you that have been begging for a super scraper get on there rate meow because uh we got the super scrapers available hurry up they don't last long now let's take a look at this thing it's white which is my favorite color on a vehicle it's got, it's a 65, so she's got the clamshell hideaway headlights. Everybody yelled at me on the uh, 63 that we did burnouts with. Said that that is not the car that Dalton drove in Roadhouse. But actually, if you pay close attention at the beginning of Roadhouse, Dalton had a 63 or 4 with the headlights in the middle like that car. And then later in the movie, he had a car with the hideaway headlights like this. These work? Sure do. It's got a lot of lichenins going on there. So this will be a good pressure washing option when we get it running. You know, uh, hood ornaments busted. This, I've wanted a nice one of these forever. This is not a nice one, but it is nicer than the one that we had before. I think anyway. Which isn't saying much. This is a three-year member of AAA in Minnesota. Minnesota car. Uh, when we did load it up, the gas pedal was laying on the ground after I loaded the car up. So yeah, it's it's real nice. It had collector plates on it, so it was somebody's prized possession. She's a hybrid, so it's ready to go to the Californias. It's missing the hubcaps. I think I put some tubes and some tires, probably. Got a lot of body filler going on there. Got a mouse trap there. All these cars were bucket seat cars, console. This has got roll up windows. The last one we had had power windows. This car does have air conditioning and it's also got tilt. So that's pretty swanky. Keys are in it. Hey, we might have the factory hubcaps. Oh yeah, that's right. One of the wheels was locked up. So we had to uh, take the brakes out of one of them. I don't remember which one that was, but we'll figure it out at some point. Is that window busted or just rolled down? Just rolled down and I was too lazy to roll it back up. So I'm sure that's not helping the floor situation out. What are you, come here. Did, did you find your bone that you buried this winter? Oh, they ran the uh, screws in there and pulled the quarter panel out and uh, bounded her up real nice really nice where was she sold at russ buick fargo north dakota it's got the hitch for pulling uh, all of the tail i think i like i think the tail lights are better in the uh, 63s and fours i'm not sure i don't think we've had the trunk open it's still better than the other one i don't know how so we'll rest in the quarters a lot of sins underneath that bodywork and the floors are bad should either have a 401 or a 425. I feel like I had the hood open at one point, but 
let's just get this thing wheeled into the shop and start wrenching away. Skid steer is going to be our weapon of choice today. Let's make sure that it's not in gear. Or it's not in park, anywho. Not in park. Ah, oh, those shifters are so cool in these things. These cars are just so cool anyway. I still want one of these things, but I want like a nice one. I want like a 10, 15, 25,000 dollar one. A good one. But I want to pay like 5,000 for it. Price and availability on this thing. We didn't get a title with it, so you can deal with that because I'm about done dealing with the whole title situation. It's getting ugly out there. I'd use Bernie, but I want it facing that way on the hoist and I don't want to hook it, go that way, spin it around. I'm lazy. This thing is the lazy man's rollback. Speaking of rollbacks, check that thing out. That thing's awesome. All right, we got Dalton on the uh, lift here. Let's take a look at the old bottom side and see what kind of surprises we got. Duff says there's gonna be a few. So, he's got kind of a interesting suspension. They got this, I don't know. It's not your standard double control arm setup, but it is what it is. 45 fin aluminum drums. Those are the coolest. Disc brakes are probably better, but these look cool on open wheel hot rods. Ooh. I thought it rolled coming in. It still rolls. These are an X-frame car, like the 58 to 64 Impalas and other GM full-size cars. We'll just say Impalas. What is this? Oh, that's the fuel line. And they got some fancy, dancy wing nuts, clamp off, fuel stoppage set up, and a nice brass hose barb for us to rob. I'm guessing they had it running off a boat tank, maybe. Who knows? But anyway, more parts. I don't know about these pinch offers. Never seen one before. But clearly, that's what it's designed to do. We'll hang on to that and probably never use it again. I think these are. That looks like a Turbo 400 pan to me. Or a Switch Pitch 400. It's probably a Switch Pitch 400. Should be a good one. It's got a Fram oil filter on it. That must be the drain for the AC. I think all these cars had dual exhaust. Should. That's a definitely a nail head oil pan. They got the skirted block, so the crank is up here, but the block hangs down there. Skirts, real good. Oh man. Flexi hose on the bottom, which is causing the radiator to leak for sure. Definitely didn't happen while somebody was moving around with the skid steer. A couple more splices. Oh boy, in the fuel line. Why is there a splice there? That is real stiff. We're gonna be disconnecting that to get her running off a boat tank anyway. There must be a steel line inside of it because that is way stiffer than any fuel hose should ever be. There's where the gas pedal should be. Foot feed, if you will. There's our shift linkage oh sweet it comes over here on the passenger side goes down to this cross shaft goes over to the driver's side and then ahead engineering it's great floors not great we'll just pretend like those are fine i think this is a 9.3 inch Ooh, well, these are the double carden joint Plus it's a two-piece drive shaft with a hanger bearing right there, Duff. Hey, get your fender covers, Mortski.com. We don't need them around here because we don't have anything worthy of a fender cover. I suppose Reggie and the Galaxy. But yeah, fender covers. They got 34 grill on them. They're good. I wonder if it's a posi. The last one was. Nope, single wheel. Dang it. Coil springs monstrosity of a rear end i don't see a tag on it probably some 300 308 gears look at this muffler so it isn't true dual exhaust looks like the exhaust comes in here and it comes in here and then it must cross over but i'm guessing it's going to come out right there and right there 
God, that is a ginormous rear end. We do like big rear ends. No aluminum drums on the back, but that's like a freaking 13 inch brake drum. It's probably 12, but that's a lot of braking power. The old uh, body mount's a little squishy there. Quarter panner's soft. Rockers are good though. Lifted it up on it and they didn't blast through. But yeah, she's rusty down here. What did they tie to with the hitch? Oh, just this rear cross member. And it kind of pulled it out. Whoops. Speaking of pulling out. That must have been from unloading it off the trailer. Should have left that in there for when we get her started. Blast it all out of there. Oh, oh yeah. That's the good stuff, Duff. All of the mud. Anywho, yeah. Fuel tank ain't rusted through, but got a couple of hooey's in it. Do they even have trailer lights? I don't see any. No trailer lights on the boat trailer. Another AAA decal back there. This quarter's soggy. Should we let her down on the ground? Rip into the old nail head? Okay, good call. Well, it looks like our hood insulation is uh, not insulating much anymore. So we're gonna get rid of that. All right, that's out of the way. Ooh, it's got the Edelman lift lever turn cap. I know there's no coolant in it because I'm intelligent like that. Apparently there's some type of warning there. Don't check the coolant level when the engine's hot. Yeah, makes sense. Condenser, because it's an AC car. Look at that. The belt's even on it. What is that? A return? There's a return on the filter and a whole bunch of hose clamps. Power steering, power brakes. I Pretty sure that was standard on these cars, but you never know. It's got the old frigid air AC compressor, dual groove alternator. It's got a clutch fan, so we can't turn that over to get it spinning over by hand. These things have the largest air cleaners known to man. Power antenna? Or just sliding? I bet it's power. We'll just we'll just say that it is. The old mices we're making a home in there. It appears, good spot for it. What is that? Hopefully that wasn't a block of wood that was holding the hood open to fill said air cleaner. If the carburetor is stuck, which this one is, it's very possible the engine is stuck. Ah, it's complete. We got that going for us. It's got a high idle solenoid here for the AC, points ignition, all the plug wires are there. So that we uh, don't miss any of those. Let's go pull the drain plug and see how much water comes out of the uh, oil pan. It's not a good spot for it. Let's just check the dipstick and see if it's over full. Right on the full mark. We might be okay. But why is the carburetor stuck? Where does the dipstick but go, Jimmy? I just pulled this thing out of here. Now I can't figure out where it goes back into. Oh, they go into the block. They don't have a dipstick tube. Saving manufacturing costs. We got the fuel line hooked from the quad quarter jet. I think the last of these nail heads did have quarter jets. This is a Carter AFB style carb. There we go, got her loose. It isn't too stuck. Now it's super free. I mean, it doesn't return on its own. Well, kinda. Good to go. Let's go underneath. Put a bar on it and see if we can't get it. Let's just throw a battery in it. This week's battery sponsor is NASCAR Arthur. You too can be a battery sponsor at Mordski.com. Ooh, battery cables. Black times two. Ooh, this one's got a red ground going to the voltage regulator. So that should be a ground. Power, it's got this little solenoid thinger up here. Just based on what the previous owner said about the engine being locked up, I'm guessing the starter is just going to go click. I'll go hit the key. We'll see if she cranks over. Fuel line is unhooked, so we're not going to pick up any bad gas. It's unhooked up here. It's unhooked down there. Unhooked everywhere. Okay, let's put her in the park. 
Okay, a shift linkage is not happy. We either got to be in neutral or park to get it to turn over for the neutral safety switch. And the old shifter ain't doing shifting things, so we're going to get a whammer out. We're going to persuade it into shifting. That was Duff's suggestion. I said, let's do it with the soft hammer. You want the honors? No thumbs, got it. Here's what we got going on here. I suppose, oh, does this one got the right shift pattern? The last, yeah, it is a turbo 400 or switch pitch 400 versus up there. The last one we had was park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. I think it was a two speed. This is a three speed. Ooh, custom speed stripes on the seat cover. Standard oil road maps, Minnesota. All right. I think we gotta get the button to go down and the button's not going down. Button's down, got it. Button's not coming back up. We'll worry about that later. Wood drain? I wonder if that's OEM, it must be. Looks like it's about ready to be deleted though. I love how these things got like factory bucket seats in the rear. All that white, man, this thing must have been a gorgeous car when it was new. All right, let's hit the key, see what happens. Nothing. Let's go do some troubleshooting. Got any ideas? Check the battery cables first. I can do that. Otter Tail Co-op Oil Company. Ooh, I smudged it and just about wiped it off. 92,000, 95,000? How many miles are on it? Oh, it's got the Moto Minder up there, set at 65. It looks like 05665, so it must have 105 on it. I guess I could clean these up, but I don't think that's our problem. Get the test light out. Well, we got power there. Is this our starter solenoid? Oh, here's the purple wire for the solenoid right here. Sweet! Sweet! Come on now, there we go. We just hook our loser switch up to this. We should be able to get this engine to go ka-chunk, at least. Now let's see what happens. Not locked up. That was easy enough. So I wonder why it's not turning over with the key. Probably just the neutral safety switch. Or it's the ignition switch. Or it's a bad connection. Could be a plethora of terrible electrical issues. So, let's see if the key gives us power to the coil. Key is on. Power to the coil. Power on both sides of the coil. Does that mean... Points are open or closed. Who knows? Oh, we should probably uh, clean the fiberglass from the hood insulation out of the carburetor. Maybe. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Probably plug that vacuum hose fitting there that's going to be leaking on us. There's some, some big chunky chunks in there. We don't want our nail head sucking up any more trash than it has to, so let's try to get in there to the back and suck that out of that carp. All right, we know this thing's gonna run. It's a GM, so let's plug that vacuum fitting. Hopefully it's not for anything important. Now let's see if we got any spark itch. Please don't shock me. By the power of Grayskull. Yep, it's got spark. Don't let your test light get wrapped up in the fan blade. Nope, she needs the old Mortsky flick for sure. Oh, those are super crusty. I'm gonna move that coil wire so that it don't whack me because the key's on and it's gonna spark. Get in there real nice and deep black. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep like. Now, see if we got spark. 
I can hear it, but I can't see it. All right, here we go. The Mortski Flick. 60% of the time it works every time. 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. This is almost as easy as a HEI and a Quadrajet. Just throw battery. I guess we did have to flick the points. You don't have to do that on a HEI, but I'm gonna go get some hot sauce, set up a tailpipe cam, and this thing's gonna light right off. Probably. Maybe. Definitely. What do you think? Pretty good chance, huh? All right, let's fill the bowls. Oh, the old uh, Carter AFB here. See if the old nail head's gonna breathe fire once again. I already know the answer to that. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. <laughs> Not even clattering. Fill them up real good so she idles for a while. In theory, anywho. I'm guessing all these vents are tied, at least two of them are tied to the same float bowl. But I like putting a little in all of them just in case one is plugged up. It's my show, I do what I want. I do what I want. Slingshot, engage. A little dusty. Didn't I say that there was like no valve train noise the first time it kind of popped off? Yeah, well I lied. A little clattery. It was almost too easy. I think it idled forever. Is the fan blade hitting the shroud? Is it that AC compressor? Or the exhaust? Something's chirping over here. Oh, the compressor's locked up. Oh, it's not. Oh my word. It's not hooked up though. The clutch is not hooked up anyway. It's got a little noise up here though. Can't figure out what it is. It's not like a terrible noise, but I don't know if it's an exhaust leak over here or the water pump, something. We got a radiator. This thing might be about ready to go. Let's check the brakes. Who knows, maybe the transmission's bad too. You got turbo 400's bad? Yeah, probably not. The dreaded thread on Master cylinder cap. Yeah, right. Nothing the old Knifex can't handle, right? Maybe. Please be full of brake fluid. Yeah, right. We knew better. Whew. It's a Bendix, though. For whatever that's worth. Oh, it's artificially intelligent as well. 48 model. Little, uh, sludgy if you will let's wipe that out and throw some brake fluid in there see what happens may as well get all the grit out of there before we get started did i say all the grit yeah let's get the uh low lying fruit the heavy debris out of there not even any 
amount of residual brake fluid in there. she has been dry for a while. Pretty uneventful tailpipe cam over here, eh, Duff? Maybe just an ever so slight amount of mouse house coming out of the uh, right tailpipe. Well, I guess there's a little out the left side. Not a lot of activity. Good job keeping an eye on that, though. You don't suppose there's a trunk key in that car, do you? We gotta go in there and turn the coil off anyway before we blow that thing up. Leather key ring. Doesn't have anybody's name on it. It says Buick on it though, red ink. And somebody's house key. Probably the key to a safe. What do you think, gonna be a body? I wish. I don't wish, no. Looks like a flat spare tire. A lot of rust. I don't know what that is. Inspection cover of sorts? What's this? What? A Nova Pressometer. What the French is that? Has ever taken your blood pressure? Is this guy a doctor, Duff? Pressometer pumps pretty dry up. Yeah, that's a that's what you put on your arm for doing telling you that you got you got too much of the blood pressures. Extra thermostat or the thermostat in a Del Monte cream corn can. Oh, it's our family. Way off. Not even a jack. How come we can't ever find like a freaking firearm or a hatchet? Oh, a jar full of nails. A jar full of dirt. I shouldn't open that. That might be somebody's ashes. We'll just put that back. And close. Dang it, Edna. Get back in your jar. No uh, cats or raccoons that have died underneath the spare tire, so that's a plus. It's like this whole thing was coated in this film. The whole trunk's got it. I don't know what that is, some type of rust preventative or something? Clearly, they put it in the wrong spots. Well, didn't do any good down there anyway. Okay, nothing good in the trunk. Oh, we're missing the, the cover with the shields on it that goes over the uh, trunk lock. I wonder where that went. Duff don't know. How much brake fluid can we spill? Oh, doing pretty good. There we go, brakes are fixed. Just kidding, not a chance. I suppose there's any in the lines if we just pump the pedal a few times? Yeah, you're right. I'll be happy if it's just not rock hard. Or if it returns. Okay. The pedal's not coming back up. Hey, wood grain there too. Fancy. Oh, our knob for our remote mirror is busted. What if we pull it back? There we go. Yeah, I don't think that master cylinder is very happy. Either the master or the booster is not happy about returning. I'm guessing. The uh, piston in the bore of the master is not in very good condition. Would you concur with my statement? Concur with what, sir? Yes. It's crappy, he says. Look at that. 140 Speedo. This thing, they were, uh, what's that? What's the word? Optimistic. Yeah. And then uh, dummy lights for everything else. Other than the fuel gauge, oil temp and amp, clock, headlights, doubt they work, floor dimmer switch, that's seized, defrost, heat, air conditioning, you could have the air conditioner and the heater on at the same time. Why do you want to listen to the TV with the stereo on? Because I like to party. Heater, air conditioner. Oh, there's a... 
Those are two blowers. They're one on the left, one on the right, one on the front, one on the rear. You may never know. Courtesy light. Mystery switch, or was that for another courtesy light? I would imagine another courtesy light. Anything useful in there? Ooh, that was somebody's elixir. Let's see if we can find some documentation on when... Ooh, Dolores, it's got a name. Remember, your Buick dealer knows your Buick best. Never forget, Duff. 1965 Riviera Owner's Manual. Or just the front and back of it. Your Buick dealer knows your Buick best. Sweet. We got Dolores' uh, insurance premium for August of 89 through February of 1990. So that's only... 34 years ago, 70 some bucks, $74 and 60 cents. They must have had all of the insurance. 1990, that's a 25 year old car then. So like the equivalent of a 90, 1999 vehicle. Not that old back then, but kind of old. I don't remember any 65 Buicks rolling around town when I was growing up as a kid in the nineties. Here's another card with her name on it Dolores oh that's 91 so we're to what 33 years ago please don't bite me today touching yesterday the threshing bee in Dalton Minnesota 1978 just north of Interstate 94 home of the Giants I was thinking like Giants, like that was the name of their sporting event. It's like the Giant Tractors. What a deal. Those people were having a good time dancing away there. For the ladies, homemakers display, the old rural school. Rug weaving, quilting, and butter churning. Our 25th reunion. Thresherman's Breakfast, entertainment. Oh, there's the sawmill. Special events, Queen Coronation, yeah, Corey's Belgians. From our start in 1954 with just three, three steam engines, we have grown to be one of the largest shows in the United States. Attractions include over 30 steam traction engines, 50 old gas tractors, and more than 100 large and small gas engines and numerous large and small stationary steam engines. Many are in action. Each day, the old steamers are highlighted in a parade of the giants. The old Rumley. What else is in here? All kinds of goodies. Oh, sure enough, there's our power antenna switch. Suppose that was supposed to be right there. Oh, there's a 92 registration. Down to uh, 32 years. So it looks like 32 years. That's what we're going by. Oh, what kind of huffing material is that? We may never know. Get back here. Auto spray touch up. Oh, we can just repaint this thing real quick. Oh, it doesn't have any lead in it. Dang it. Oh, I'm guessing it had brake issues before because there's a jar of brake fluid back here. Dang it. Oh, clay pigeons. What a deal. Clay pigeon, singular. You really want to go for an RIDE, don't you? Well, in order to do that, we need a radiator. So let's get this thing out of here, see if we can fix it. It's not looking good. Let's see if we can find something else that'll fit in there. Maybe we got uh, something in a 64 Oldsmobile or a 60 Cadillac. We're not stealing it out of the uh, 63 Catalina. Maybe we can just slather a bunch of JB Weld in there. Maybe we just get a really long flexi hose and loop it. Who knows? Let's uh, get this radiator out of there and see what we can do. Looks like we just got some radiator hoses. We got some tranny lines down there. We gotta get this fan shroud out of the way, which is probably gonna require taking the fan off, so we might wanna do that first. And then uh, just this clamp up here. Pretty straightforward.
when we got her out of there, eh, Duff? So here's what we're dealing with. It's all busted out around the uh, transmission cooler line. And it looks like it's about to let loose around the lower hose. We can try straightening this out a little bit. And then uh, I could probably... No, I'm not good at soldering. JB Weld that. But that's going to be the big issue because there's a little mini cooler in here for the transmission and then there's radiator fluid antifreeze all around that so we're gonna lose an antifreeze around that so really what this thing needs other than to go in the trash is a whole new bottom tank but we'll see what we can do do a little body by Mortski. see what happens we ain't out nothing for trying You get that lower neck quite a bit better, but it's starting to let loose right in there. And it's gonna take an awful lot of filler inside of that guy. I'm sure a good uh, hack like DD Speed Shop, or even better yet, a radiator shop could fix that. See what we can do. Gonna mix up a quick batch of JB Weld, quick weld six minutes you know what works great for a mixing stick magnetic screwdriver available at mortski.com man i feel like a real manitobian dd speed shop now this is terrible just so we're 100 percent. this is like race car stuff that's what they do what in the heck this is junk it's like running down like ooze what the heck is this stuff oh what a disaster Ugh, honestly it's like embarrassing what happened here but let's get after it Ran out of the JB quick, so we had to put some of the standard stuff on there. We'll see how that combines. It actually came out pretty good. And if you were to take your time and really play around with it and got experienced and smoothed it out, put black paint on it, this would probably pass as uh, acceptable to some people. Remind me to order some more of this stuff. I wonder what the shelf life is. This stuff has been in my toolbox for a long time. I, I don't use the old jb weld quick well, there's no date down there there's probably a way to decipher a date from that but anyhow this is some actually pretty good stuff but it's 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 a patch that's exactly what it is it's not a repair it's a patch so while that's setting up we got a while on these are even older yet does it say how long we got to leave this stuff sit probably like a freaking day it causes cancer in california so it can't be that old uh yeah you can fix your caterpillar engine block with this stuff but this stuff is garbage oh yep yeah i'm just crumbling it just picking it off well that stuff's setting up i'm gonna go see what i can come up with for a radiator that's just laying around that we could stab in there for the time being because I don't have a lot of faith in that. Not a lot of faith in the old JB Weld Mortski radiator repair. What's your uh, level of, yeah, confidence? Look at those eyes. The stare of confidence. If you say so, I'm gonna still look anyway. We gotta do something while that stuff sets up. Did a little scrounging out back and we got this 1964 Oldsmobile Jetstar that is locked up and about ready to rust in half. Nobody wants to buy it and I guess I don't blame them. I'm the only idiot who would buy something like this but anyway the radiator's really close. One thing I don't understand about GM is you know Ford kind of had the Y block for okay the Lincolns were different but the Mercury's and the uh, Fords were the same but Oldsmobile had an engine, Buick had an engine, 
Pontiac had an engine, Cadillac had an engine, Chevrolet had their own engines, which is fine, I guess, kinda, maybe, sorta, but at least put the freaking radiator hose outlets and inlets in the same spot, orientation. So I got all kinds of GM Chevrolet radiators around, but they are uh, top left, bottom right is what I call it. And uh, the old freaking Buick is top right, bottom left. And the Oldsmo pile is top left, bottom left. So it's got the same mounting style. It's in front of the core support. These engines must be longer or set ahead or whatever. But there's all kinds of room to route the radiator hose. Plus we get a nice flexi hose out of this deal. And the transmission cooler hoses they for go from a line to a hose those will be easy to snip and throw away uh, only crappy part is it's got those wire hose clamps so that might be interesting but we're gonna give this thing a whirl old billy said you need an Irwin. what do they call these things the power slot i guess these things mow through the uh, hog rings on the upholstery side of things pretty easy never mind the uh maybe soon to be two-door, four-door conversion 56 over there. But anyway, hopefully this mows right through that. All right, let's do this. It's cold, it's frosty. Somebody needs that thing too. What else we got out here for sale? Oh, that stubby Bob wannabe things for sale. We're, we're thinning some stuff out. The Grand Prix is over there, that can go away. That's short bed, step side C10. Mm, we might use it for parts. We got inventory. Let's see if we can get her out in one trip. Oh, what a beast this is. This is actually a pretty dang cool car, but it's just so rotten. So rotten. All right, power slot. Don't let me down. It'd be cool if that hose clamp was just rusted through like everything else on this piece of crap. But it's not. Or is it? Son of a... That's a big chunk of skin. Flexi hoses are dangerous, kids. Ow. Tell you what, old Billy wasn't lying. The old Irwin power slot mows right through these things i think he sent me a picture of craftsman makes one too anywho i got those on the amazonia go check them out for yourself if you hate dealing with wire style hose clamps now we just gotta get that bottom hose off done did you find any rabbits or are you just running around for no reason Hopefully this thing didn't leak. There we go. And would you believe it? We didn't have to make any trips back to the shop for tools. That does not happen very often. Thank you, Oldsmobile, for your service. Actually, it was more of a donation than a service. Until we meet again. This golf cart is handy. Somebody, I think, like Andrean Motorsports or somebody. I forget his name is. That's the problem with commenting on YouTube. Your name is right there. He's like, yeah, I forget what he lit me up about. Oh, he called me an idiot. I mean, he's, he's probably not wrong, but no need for vulgar words. But then he said something about me calling this a golf car. He's like, it's a side-by-side. -side. Okay, Andrean Motorsports. He's also got like nine subscribers on the YouTube, so he clearly knows way more than me. All right, back to the shop. What else we got? Oh, somebody needs to buy that stupid advanced design on an S10 frame. It's really not that bad of a pickup, actually. I suppose we'll have to drag it back in and work on it again. Ooh, and a crew cab Ford ramp truck. I don't want to give that away, because I think it's pretty good, actually. Fired right up the other day, and it's pretty rare. Where are you going to find another crew cab square headlight Ford ramp truck? 460 life. 
Oh yeah, and you can own a short bed Dodge. We were driving that yesterday. Works pretty good. So many things in the yard. Can't keep them all though, can we? Here you go inside. It's freaking cold out. All right, I would definitely rather work on starters because some parts interchange on those and we kind of know what we're doing. No, no we don't. Let's look what we got going on here. We got an Oldsmobile, a Buick, and a Cadillac. We just need a Pontiac radiator to throw in the mix. So here's our JB Weld setting up display. This is out of a Cadillac. Cadillac's got these mounts on the side, which this one's halfway coming off. Oh, and then the outlet's in the middle on the top instead of being on the right-hand side. Uh, but we got, these are like 25 and a half inches wide. We got 26 inches of room. Well, with this flange that's half off, we run out of room. And obviously, if I could take this one flange off and put it in there, I would do it. But I don't want to have to take both off because we might need to put this in a 60 Cadillac at some given point. So we're going to try the Oldsmobile. Like I said, the big difference here is both outlets are on the left-hand side. That one's... The bottom one is on the left, which is pretty much mandatory. The top one, we can mess around with. Uh, the radiator cap's in the center on that one. It's kind of neat because this bracket actually goes around it on the Buick. But look at how rusty this thing is. So these tanks are copper. The center is brass, I think. But these straps are steel. They're freaking rusted off on this stupid thing. Just silly. Wow, Petcock's even in the right spot. On that Cadillac, it's on the front. So, hopefully, hopefully this works. Uh, and really, we should just be able to take these hoses off and put new cooler hoses on there, adapters. And, uh, yeah. And then we just got to figure out that top radiator hose and hope this thing holds coolant because it was empty. Hmm. Wonder why that could be. I wish there was a good way to test this. I suppose we could cap those off. Do we have a radiator pressure tester kit? Seems like we got one around here somewhere, but I don't remember using it ever. All right, let's do this. Things went pretty well down here. There's a bracket that holds the radiator and the outlets on the radiator was over here originally. And of course our outlet is right where that bracket is. So we just kind of hee hawed that uh, bracket out of the way. We trimmed off the ends of these hoses cause they were kinked anyway. This one's been spliced previously. Got some new three eighths transmission cooler hose. Make sure you use some type of hydraulic hose. Don't use fuel hose. That ATF is some nasty stuff. It'll chew right through those, smoke your transmission, maybe burn your car down. I think ATF is quite flammable. I don't know. We've never caught it on fire. We've caught a lot of things on fire. Oh, oh. Thanks for telling me that thing's on fire. We haven't caught ATF on fire yet, surprisingly. So maybe it's not that flammable, but anyway, use hydraulic rated ATF transmission, some type of hose other than fuel hose. Don't use aquarium hose. Don't use air hose. Something rated for your transmission fluid. All right, let's go to the top. The pet cock is tight. And uh, put a top radiator hose on it, throw some coolant in it. I suppose we should put the fan back on too. I don't know if we'll put the shroud on it. Maybe. Let's see what I feel like. What do you think? Was this thing gonna hold coolant? I kinda wanna know. Maybe we'll have to get that tester out if we can find it. 
They call this power steering hose, but let's be honest, we use ETF and power steering. This is uh, part number, it's Gates, 350010, 25 feet worth. We got a few feet left, but we've used up a good chunk of it. Don't use the fuel hose. Fans on, we couldn't run the shroud because I think this radiator is thicker. I'm too lazy to measure, but this clamp doesn't drop over it. And so we couldn't get the radiator shroud, fan shroud in the right location. So it was hitting the fan and fan shrouds, they're nice. Uh, GMs of this vintage, they were usually only on air conditioned car, which this is. It's frosty outside, so it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The air conditioning is probably not gonna work we're probably not gonna try it. I don't think we've ever tried to use air conditioning on this channel, on one of these old cars. So we'll be fine without it. It's fiberglass, so the ones on the Impalas of this vintage, well, up to 64, I know, were steel. They look like the bottom of a 55 gallon barrel or a culvert, if you will. This fiberglass, so a little bit more stylish, got some sex appeal, Buick things. Now we just gotta do the top radiator hose. The flexi hose that we have is meant for a thermostat neck. Speaking of thermostats, it's got a thermostat in it. So they didn't take it out, pull, just throw it in the trunk. They put a new one in. Uh, the thermostat housing comes off at an angle so that flexi hose isn't long enough to drop down vertically. Uh, our OEM hose is meant to go this way. We can try it, but I feel like it's not gonna be facing the right direction. So, you gotta figure out the top. Red meter hose. They make some really neat flexi hoses. They got a 90 degree on the end of them. That's exactly what we need. Maybe I'll have to dig through my flexi hose stash. Yeah, if we cut it there, spun this around, we'd probably be all right. Oh no, is it bigger? Dig, nail it. I think we can get that to go, don't you, Duff? Maybe not. All right, time to find a radiator hose. Oh, look at that. Nice, girthy, flexi hose there. All of the curvature. All right, well, have I told you how much I love flexi hoses? Yeah, really, really, really adore them. All right, let's throw some antifreeze in it and see where it leaks. Nothing running out the, ah, oh, son of a biscuit. Coming out the petcock. Sure enough, the petcock was threaded all the way in and that's why it felt like it was tight. So we threaded it all the way out, fixed that leak. But our uh, used flexi hose is leaking over here. Reused, you, I don't know. The one that was on my car. So I'm gonna take that thing off and uh, grab one out of the flexi hose bin over there by Duff and uh, get rid of one more flexi hose in my collection. Dwindling down. Do not send me more flexi hoses. We're good on the flexi hose situation. I mean, we didn't dump like four gallons in. We do need a antifreeze slash engine oil sponsor. It seems like we're going through a lot of that lately. And petroleum. Gas is cheap though. Can't afford not to drive a big block. Cheese and rice, just splash everywhere. All right, try number two on putting coolants in. Hear any dripping, Duff? Nothing yet. On a side note, it's good to know that the pet cock was open and that's why this radiator was empty and not that it has a hole in it.
two gallons in, I guess I better go mix up a third gallon so we can get this thing topped up. Ooh, is it up? No, it ain't above the cores yet. Closer to three and a half on a Buick, apparently. When you put an Oldsmobile radiator in it, anyhow. Oh, I can't squeeze the radiator hose. Stupid flexi hose. Usually I like to give them a squeeze at the end, pushes a little fluid up here, and then I put our stopper in there and then pull it out, and then we don't waste any. Put our fancy Edelman lift lever turn cap on. That's a wrap on the cooling system, I hope. Come on. There you go. I'm going to take a break from the old Riviera for a little bit. Chin just messaged me where he works. They got these, these wooden crates that we store parts in, in the cold storage buildings. And Anyway, they're super freaking handy, and they're kind of hard to come up with. Whatever. Free stuff. But he brought me a bunch either yesterday, yeah, yesterday, on the trailer, because they apparently have a pile of them as of recent. So... We gotta unload the trailer so that he can go back and get us some more. So we're gonna take the skid steer and unload those so that Chin can get us some more crates so that we can accumulate more junk. Cause that's what we're here for, accumulating the junk. Maybe we'll fill them up with flexi hoses and nail head parts and four speed parts and Catalina parts. That's what we need to do is take all these and put them in a tote and stash them away. Cause uh, we're pretty much done with everything on this table that's Catalina related. So that's good, other than the manifold. Still gotta figure out that issue. All right, let's go do skid steer things. I think I counted 23 of them. We should have all kinds of room for all kinds of stuff. And uh, empty trailer for 20 more. All right, now back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. Duff's checking them out, make sure I put them away right. How's it look? Looks like that's a really expensive piece of concrete just to store crates on, he says. She's a little greasy out, must be warming up. Still ice out here though, so we didn't tear up the yard much. Old Bernie, we haven't had him running in about a month. Better start dragging some junk around. Well, if we're gonna be doing donuts and burnouts and other things in a safe manner, we gotta have some breaks. So when I loaded this thing up, the left front wheel was dragging. So I took the spindle nut off, dust cap, all that. Pulled the drum off. Now we gotta put it all back together because I just set the drum back on there and gutted the insides. And the reason it wasn't turning is because the shoes were stuck to this steel liner inside this gorgeous aluminum brake drum. Let me show you this thing. These things are awesome. You put a real narrow, uh, 16 inch or 15 inch early Ford wheel like those and you can see all these fins you can even polish them up You could chrome plate them if you really wanted to but we're gonna clean this up. So it's Nice and smooth ish And then we got to put this all back together. So when I pulled it off, hopefully this liner stays on there Stays bonded. So when we pull it off it pulls the hoo-hahs out of these things and the uh Anyway, it ruins these. Well, this thing might be okay. Anyway, we gotta find these new washers. 
or mash them flat or do something because it ain't gonna hold on. So we gotta do some cleaning there and we gotta do some part search in there. I should be able to find something else. I save all this garbage. And it's uh, it's gonna be good to go. I checked inside the wheel cylinder. Wasn't a much of Hoover Schneef in there. Of course, you know, when I was inside pushing the brake pedal, I can't imagine it was any good for these things. Wheel cylinder, so let's put that back together. Put everything back together. Collar good. All right. Yeah. I love these brake drums. Freaking awesome. If Mojo was here, we'd have him throw them on the brake lathe and clean them up. But I'm not a brake lathe extraordinaire like him, and Mojo's out sick. You can blame that on me. I stayed out sick last week, kept away from him. But of course, you know, Mojo, being the guy that he is, he had to give me a hug as soon as I came to the shop. So that's probably why he got it. Okay, maybe not. I don't know how he got it. But anyway, he's out sick yesterday and today. Maybe he's just slacking. No, in the two years we've been here, I don't think he's ever called in sick once. So he must really be sick. Hopefully he's doing well. Send him your best wishes. See, so if you really want to, send us a postcard. P.O. Box 1, uh, Gwinter, North Dakota. Put Attention Mojo on there, and we'll give him some Get Well cards. Hopefully he's weller by then, but if you want to send Mojo some fan mail, I'm sure him and Mrs. Mojo would get a kick out of it. Right, Duff? Right. All right. What are we going to clean this up with? Who knows? We'll figure something out. This thing is supposed to go in here somewhere. But I don't know how it's supposed to hook. And that's just for our adjuster. And let's be honest. If we're going to put enough miles on it, the brakes need to be adjusted. We're going to put new brakes in it. So we're just going to throw that in the trunk. I did get some new washers and pins here. Everything looks good. The neat, weird, different thing. Usually this center bolt, that's where the springs hook. This thing's got this neat little bent formed tab here that they each hook on. So it's the first time I've seen anything like that. All right, I think we're ready to go back together with the old brakes. I'm going to adjust this in a little bit to give us some more clearance because we knew they were tight before. I didn't get the drum real clean, but as soon as this thing makes a few rotations, it's going to clean itself right up. I'm going to snug them up a bit more. Third time's a charm, I guess. I'm sure the way these uh, brakes are not bonded anymore. Doesn't help the whole situation. And it looks like the shoes got a little twist in them too. There we go. We can snug it up from the backside if we got to, but I think it's gonna be close enough. Definitely gonna be good enough for the girls we go with. Oh yeah, it's gonna clean up real quick. All right, I had to get a little creative with the old brake bleeding. I don't know why bleeding brakes can never be the same, but got her bled. You may or may not have plugged off the rear brakes because who needs those? And it's just twice as many problems when you got two more wheels with crusty old wheel cylinders. The pedal is rock hard now. So, and the beauty of a rock hard pedal is you don't have to pull it back up off the floor. So. We should have brakes. The ignition switch was acting up last time we messed with it. It's not cranky cranking, so I don't know if it's a neutral safety switch or a bad connection. We're not getting power to the key switch or a bad key switch. Who knows what it is? So let's dig into that so that we can start and stop the engine from the uh, console, from the uh, cockpit. Hey, well, what is the uh, heading on our BOR selector there? Oh, let me see here. I got her, I got her. Good thing I was here. From the operator's domain. Seemed like a good idea to you. You know what's a good idea? Fender covers. Even when you got crappy cars like me, get a nice fender cover. Get yours. Mortski.com, right, Duff? All right. 
first step, confirm the issue. So, let's see if it cranks over today. Where's our battery cable? There it is. We'll hook this up. It should crank over with the loser switch. And it doesn't. Why not? There, now it'll turn over. Okay, now let's hook this back up. And go try it with the ignition switch. This way we know our wiring's good from there to there, and our starter's good, and our engine's not locked up. Now let's try the ignition switch. This would be handy if you would go in the car and turn the ignition switch. You need thumbs to do that. So that tells you what I had going on. Bleeding brakes, I used a bottle with a tube in it and I hooked her up to the bleeder and I had the car up about yay high and set our bleeder on top of that wheelie cart and I had to climb up and down in and out of the car. Are the door pins all sacked out? Oh no, they ain't too bad. Not too bad, Duff. Gonna put those hubcaps on for me? That'd really clean this hot rod up. How many we got? Definitely not, oh, that's for an LTD. That one's a Buick one though. Yeah, that's definitely like a 77, 78 LTD. I was hoping we would have all four, but we got one, maybe. What are you checking out in there? Oh yeah, and when I was bleeding, the brakes pushing on the pedal, the uh, bucket seat just about blew through the floor. So floors are real nice. Really nice. Are you gonna turn the key? You're gonna be in the way if I'm gonna do it. Can I do it? Maybe it had a cooling issue before we even started. Oh, you better save that. I suppose it's actual coolant. Oh yeah, she's green. We'll throw that on the shelf. $3 rebate. Wonder when that expired. Peel back for details. Yeah, right, the whole thing's gonna come off. Well, there's not a date, so. That doesn't give us a timeline as to when this thing was parked. I'm guessing we're still stuck with 32 years ago. Does that look like 1992 ZRX? Probably. Are you still hanging out in my way? Oh, you wanted me to check out the old body by Fisher? Yeah. Even the Pontiac's got that. De donde es el baño? Yeah. See. <laughs> si. All right. Oh, let's see if this, hopefully it just fixed itself. Yes! Don't have to worry about that anymore. Must have just been a bad connection on the inner fender. You gonna go get us some boxes? Tomorrow. Oh, went through all that work today? Yes, it's ready for tomorrow, thanks. Disappointment. Look at this, we are talking about the letters earlier. Somebody sent us a wedding invite today while well, the wedding is the 14th of September. Sky and Adam in Winthrop, Maine. That's a first, Duff. We got one Valentine in there too. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Duff's my Valentine. Anywho, Sky and Adam, we'll, we'll have to see if we can make it to Maine in September. Don't hold your breath, but we'll see what we can do. And then uh, Tyler, he's all, we had to change the calendar. February is a pretty good one here. He spent way too much time making this calendar. All right, I'm gonna put a wheel back on and I think we're uh, ready to put a fuel tank in this thing and maybe test out the transmission. Oh yeah, I cleaned the number off the engine pad right there. It's a disappointment, just like me. And it's numbers matching, three, four, three, four, whatever. Four, three, four, four, three, four. Four, three, four, three, four. That's the last five of the VIN. And it is a 401, not a 425. L, which means it, no, L. L means it's 1965. T means it's a 401. And that was 325 horsepower at 4,400 RPM and 445 foot-pounds of torque at 2,800 RPM. If it was a four and a quarter, it would have been 340 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds torque. A lot of these things, 
we'll say like 445 Wildcat or 465 Wildcat, it's not a 445 cubic inch. It's 445 foot pounds of torque. That's how Buick rated them. Torques. Does ours have it on the air cleaner? No, it's gone. The more you know. Of course it couldn't be a 425. 425's just had a bigger bore. Well, there's probably some other things, but mainly bore. Sure enough, the one hubcap we got fits. Never mind that the sidewall's ready to let loose. I'm sure that tire will be fine. When I was putting that on, I know a scener fender's been welded up right there. I don't know what happened there. I'm sure this thing hasn't had any uh, histories of accidents. Anyway, uh, we're ready to the point where we gotta get some fuel to this carburetor. So I thought, maybe we'll check the fuel tank. I looked in there. It's uh, it's not good for petroleum. It's, it's maybe good for dinosaurs that aren't gonna be burned. It's, it's rusty. You could tell the last time they had it running, they had that pinched off and who knows when that was. So we're gonna have to see if we can find a hole in the floor. Good news is there's a lot of those and we'll get a tank inside, fish a hose up. We're gonna blow the budget on rubber fuel line, but we'll make her work. So I'm gonna lift her up in the air, see if we can find a hole on the passenger side cause I'm gonna need to be on the driver's side and the fuel pumps on the passenger side. So saving all the rubber fuel hose we can. All right, I don't like it because it's all rubber hose, but it is what it is. Not a lot of great routing. And originally, it looks like that was all rubber from the fuel pump straight up to the carburetor, no hard line. So, I had to tie it up in a couple spots because the exhaust manifold's there and then the exhaust dips down and gets in the way in multiple spots. Yeah, I had to go through the inside to open the passenger door the old button don't want to work but opens fine from the inside we got our marine tank right in the passenger seat so duff can keep an eye on our fuel gauge got a quarter tank of fuel ready to go utilize an existing hole in the floor check this out we got some type of little tinker toy here what is this made in Hong Kong, Stephen Manufacturing, Little tractor looking thing, got ourselves a grain belt, church key, and look at this, that's a nice knife, that's Buick worthy, be a schlag, she's a China brand, tell you what, anybody who buys a Mortsky screwdriver this week, Gets thrown in the drawing for one of these sweet trinkets. We'll even uh, autograph a decal and throw in there for you. Giving back. Looks like a safety pin, a couple of light bulbs. Grab a milk. What's this? Fergus Dairy North Star Grade A Milk. Not grab a milk, Grade A Milk. The old Fergus Dairy. I wonder if they're still in operation. Bunny bread? Put a little funny bread? Something in your life daily. All right, that's a pretty dang nice knife. And that is a pretty dang nice church key. That thing's in good shape. From Perfect Brewing Water. 
a little bit of rust on the back side, but she'll clean up. Good find. What else is in here that we're missing? Nothing. Nothing any good. That seat don't even want to fold ahead. It's got the factory Buick floor mats, though. Ooh, and a trick-or-treat bag. All right. I think we're ready to see if the transmission's going to do transmission things. I'm sure it's a gallon low, just like every other transmission that we seem to mess with anymore. I do have the electric pump inside the car, so we can hook that up to a 12-volt Milwaukee battery and prime the uh, system here, but we'll prime the carb, too, while we're at it. No guarantees that the OEM mechanical pump is going to pump any fuel. She's probably dried up. All right, let's go inside and see if she'll light off. No, it do right, Doc? Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Like she's gonna be able to run on her own, eh, Dop? Let's see if the transmission works. I can tell you it's not working. The seat brackets. That thing's about ready to fall through the floor. Minor details, your seat's way better shape. So bad! this thing to idle down. That can't be. Now let's try, see if we got some gears. The lever, it, I don't even feel like the detents were reverse driving low should be, so I don't know what's going on there. You got any ideas? You just know if we get close to an RID. Typical of Buick things, Duff. They'll do burnouts. Oh boy. We're gonna be in trouble. Just lights them up immediately. Glad it's not icy out there. Hopefully the brakes don't drag too much on us. Let's open a door. Let's open a sandwich. Call it a night. <coughs> that was immediate smoke in there. We'll uh, do a test drive tomorrow, in the daylight, because I'm sure the lights don't work. Woohoo, doggy! Way doggy. You tell him, Duff. Still just rolling out of there. That was in reverse, too. Not like that matters, but...
can't believe those dry old tires light up that much smoke. Dang. Get yourself a Buick with a nail head. All of the torques. Never mind that thing up there. That thing probably won't spin the tires either. All right, let me get some air flow in here. Never mind that thing either, or that. All right, shop's all cleared out of the burnout smoke. Let's get a air filter on this thing. Well, let's clean it out first. I'm guessing somebody's got too tall of an air filter element because we're gonna get all the quadribog action with that right there. And that, the lid isn't even upside down. Maybe that's the wrong lid, but I don't think so. Let's uh, take her outside and blow all that crud out of there. Seem like a good idea to you. Take the mail out too while you're at it. Folks need their packages. It's Valentine's Day. They gotta get their bundles for their old ladies. Maybe cold here, but I got some pretty gorgeous sunrises, eh, Duff? <laughs> Dang right. Hey, I found a wing nut and a couple of washers. No more two by fours though. And some glass, rocks, everything's in. All right, good as new. Okay, maybe not, but better than it was. How much weight does this thing point? I'm guessing that snout's got to point forward. Of course, that rubber fuel line kind of gets in the way. Does our new radiator hose get in the way? Sure enough. Silly flexi hose. Oh, that's why you can't put a wing nut on it, because the carb stud isn't tall enough anymore. So either we need to find a longer carb stud, the right air filter element. I don't keep much for air filter elements on hand. Run without an air filter or not put a wing nut on the lid. I'll see what I got for elements, but it's not looking promising. Closest I could come up with was a K-Sight CFA 113. It's shorter like we need, but it's a little bit smaller diameter. Probably, oh man, three quarters of an inch. I don't know that that's gonna work either. Not sold on it, not sold on it. Still too tall anyway. All right, longer carb stud it is. I wanna know how we got to this point. Where did the original element go? Was somebody, did somebody steal the longer carb stud? Did somebody run it without the lid on the air cleaner? Yeah, that does not wanna come out of there. We're not gonna mess with it. Cause then when somebody gets the right element in there, they're gonna have too long of a carb stud. Gonna set this up there and where's it gonna go? Nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. He's going nowhere. Where you going? Nowhere. Yeah, I don't know how we got to this point because somebody got the wrong air filter. Maybe that's why they parked it. Somebody got the wrong air filter. Couldn't get the carb stud out. Couldn't get it latched. And uh Old Dolores got parked out in the weeds. We may never know. Tell you what, I think this thing's ready for the road, so let's clear out the wash bay. See if we can't get this thing out and around the back. The one thing I'm worried about is the front brakes dragging and uh, the wheels locking up and it's kind of icy this morning, so not a great combination. Bald tires, front tires dragging, icy. Then when it warms up, it's gonna get muddy. I don't know what we're gonna do. I mean, the right thing to do would be to fix the brakes and put good tires on it, but ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So let's get this thing off the lift, get the wash bay cleared out. And let's get this thing washed off. I'm excited to see how it looks once we get all these lichens off. This thing is gonna be so satisfying. This thing must've been in the trees for years before we got it. Oh, and I did find the little badge thing for the trunk laying on the dash over there. 
So yeah, the shields, whatever you call them. And check out this battery hold down. That's a lot of mechanics wire right there. All right, let's do some putting pressure washing things, provided we can get this thing out of the shop and back into the shop. There's a puddle on the floor. And it's brake fluid. Hopefully we don't have to re-bleed these things. Hopefully it's just a bad connection on the start. Turned over so good yesterday. I can't imagine that has anything to do with it. Wes's favorite battery cable ends. So many options here. We can put a new end on it. We can put a whole new battery cable on it. All sound like viable options. We could clean it, but oh no. We're just gonna take this end off, flip it around the other way. See how she's got them ribs there? We're gonna flip the ribs around so it really clamps down. Get all the contact. Oh yeah, real tight. That ain't going nowhere. So confident in my work, I'm gonna close the hood. Maybe. I feel like the air filter's hitting it, air cleaner, whatever. You know what I'm saying. How about now? <laughs> Guess which wheel cylinder is leaking? If you guessed both, you'd be correct. How did that leak all the way out there? Is that gas? Are we leaking gas? We're definitely leaking exhaust out the muffler. Look at you got way more coming out the left side. The right side's just a little trickle of smoke. What would be leaking behind that front wheel? Oh! That's the fuel from the old fuel tank that they had pinched off. That's what's leaking out there, Duff. But the master cylinder, that left front wheel is definitely leaking brake fluid. Look at that cute little amount of smoke coming out of that pipe. Don't run terrible, does it, pal? All right, it's cold out here. Let's go do some pressure washing. Oh, we made it around to the back side of the shop, didn't run into anything. Didn't die, car didn't die. Duff still with us. That seat's super uncomfortable. She's dropped out real hard in the left rear. Let's get this window rolled up because we don't want to get our nice seat wet. Leave the animals alone that are living in there. You goon. Maybe that's why the window wasn't up. Maybe it doesn't go up. Since you're naked, should I take my clothes off and do some pot county pressure washing? Please don't, he says.
Holy buckets, look at the difference this thing's making. Yeah, it doesn't have the greatest paint job and there's still a little rust in there, but that was a lot of schmoo on this car. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of body work things that have been taking place. I'm guessing that door got wrapped around too far because that's a pretty big area in there, but look at how good the roof is though. You know, you got to take the positive things. There's the old lead seam from the quarter panel. God, they got in there real deep when they were grinding other stuff out. Don't you think, Duff? Yeah. There was a lot of scuzz on this car. Are you going to clean the floor in the shop after I'm done here? That'd be great. It's going to be a mess. I'm going to be a mess. I can just feel that crap running down my neck. All right. Let's get the passenger side done. You want to do the passenger side? You don't even have to have a thumb, you just gotta have a trigger finger. Not so much. Okay. Run out of the diesel fuel engine, the pressure washer. So we're gonna have to get some more of that because we need all the heat to get all the lichens and the other unlichens off of the old Riviera. So, I'm gonna put some diesel in the old pudding machine over here so we can get some heat back in the water. Do you want the honors? I think it goes right here, right? Fuel oil diesel. Yep, that's the one. Oh man, we're getting our 390 CAD engine and our 34 Ford pickup all covered in the lichens. We need a dedicated wash bay. Or just clean up some of the mess we got around here. But what fun would that be? Do you thoroughly enjoy watching me pressure wash over there? The home stretch. Home stretch, baby! A little steamy in here like we got our own uh, personal sauna. Look at how good this left front looks with a hubcap. I think we got to find three random full wheel hubcaps and put on there. Put the white line out. Yeah, now we're talking. What do you think, pal? What? Torque thrust? Yeah, those would look good too. It looks so res-tastic with that bare steel wheel. We got to let her dry out anyway, otherwise we're going to freeze outside, you know? We don't want it to get a cold, because it's wet. I wonder if we can play around with them headlights. Get them clamshells to come down too, eh? But yeah, cleaned up pretty good. A lot better than it was, anywho. Alright, let's dig for some hubcaps. So we got all four white wall tires. We got three anyway, for sure. Oh, dang it, we got one black wall on the back. Yep. You gotta have the full wheel caps on a classy car like a Riviera, right? No dog dishes. No offense to you and your kind, but dog dishes just ain't gonna cut it on this hot rod. It's a custom duff. Wanna go find some hubcaps for us? That'd be great. I'm gonna get uh, washed up. I feel like a dirt ball. Probably because I always am. What'd you come up with for hubcaps? I think these are like 71. Two Impala? I don't know. And there was a fifth one. It's a little bit different. You. That's a lot of bit different. It's got the finer fins in it. Anyhow, let's pop a couple of them on there. See how that looks. All you gotta do is put a little Buick sticker in the middle. Nobody will know the difference. Hopefully they're 15s and not 14s. Oh yeah, better already. Not my favorite, but I can live with it. The price is right. What do you think? Get the paw of approval? Better than it was. Something 
smooth without those sl slots. I don't know what to say. Just like a big, like a big, uh, not a baby moon, but what do you call those things? The salt flat disc thing or spun aluminums. Yeah, spun aluminums. Something similar to that, but not a spun aluminum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's get this last one on. That looks terrible with the black wall out, doesn't it, Duff? On the right car, you gotta have the white wall out. Wheels, tires, stance makes or breaks any car. Sometimes it's, it's budget. I wanna say budget because hubcaps, but Steel wheels that are wider than normal or different offset are getting expensive and hard to find. And hubcaps are through the freaking roof. Doesn't matter if they're full hubcaps or dog dish hubcaps or what, but I don't know what happened to the hubcap scene, but it's insane. Still maybe cheaper than buying new aluminum wheels. And the beauty of hubcaps is you can just pop them off and pop some different ones on where with aftermarket aluminum wheels. You gotta buy four new wheels and tires. Then you gotta buy lug nuts. Then you gotta buy center caps. Then you gotta buy valve stems. Right, Duff? Those do look somewhat similar to the factory Buick ones. So, I mean, it ain't the worst thing in the world. It looks a lot better. And we got a couple spares. Now, I remember vacuuming out that last Riviera because the headliner was just full mouse house. Guess what this one is, Duff? Full mouse house. So I'm gonna vacuum that out for you. Or you just wanna hoover sneep it right out of there. So the cool thing about this Riviera is it's white on white. The last Riv that we had, what's cool about that one is black on black. So we got two cars that are very similar. One being a 63, one being a 65. There's a couple changes in there, but that one had electric windows and no AC, no tilt. This one's got, oh, and that one had the two speed silly transmission. This has got the three speed. Switch pitch 400, manual windows, which I prefer, and then it's got AC, which I'm kind of impartial, unless it's working, and then tilt. So a couple of the differences in there. But white on white cars, black on black cars, both excellent choices. I don't think you could go wrong with any color combination on these Rivieras, but white on white, this thing was a sharp car in its day. Oh, that one had power seats. This one doesn't, which I'd rather not have power seats. The power in the 60s, even through the 80s was a little sketchy, left a lot to be desired. It was in its infancy, so. All right, I'm gonna grab the vac and suck that headliner out. Cause we don't want Mouse House falling on our head in our test drive. To prevent any further incidents, I gotta roll a headliner here. Attempt to seal this back up. Attempt is used quite loosely. This seat's crunchy, Duff. Sorry. It's probably how you like them. Just like you like your bacon. You know, the right thing to do would have been just to rip this headliner out of here. I'm an idiot. So, here we are. That! Quit falling in my face. This stuff gets in my mouth. I'm burning this mother trucker right to the ground. This is not a good idea. Come on tape, stick to the other tape. Okay, we won't be doing that anymore. Maybe one more? Did I just say I wasn't gonna be doing that anymore? Yeah, I lied. Oh yeah, that's the key. The third piece of tape. There we go. Oh yeah. He's ready for the Grand National Roadster Show. This one's not gonna drip on my head. There's a lot less fecal matter up there. It's probably not gonna help out much. 
Another goodies are in here. Oh, it's a chunk of wood grain. Phew! Duff wanted me to tell you how nice that door panel is. Let's see if we can't clean it up real quick. We don't have much for cleaners around here. We got glass cleaner and goo gone. Shows you how much cleaning we do. Let's hit her with the goo gone. See what happens. So satisfaction. Much improved. Nice, very. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It did come out a little bit. Kind of. Imagine how good this would look if we really cared and knew what we were doing. Kind of the motto of this whole channel, huh? Well, it won't be sticky, at least, with the goo gun. What if we get some scrubbing action in this? Look at this scrubbing tool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably should get a bucket of soapy water. That would be the key. But at least with the goo gone, it'll smell nice and citrusy in the car. Look how good that looks, Duff. Real nice. The problem with cleaning this is, now you're gonna wanna do the whole car. Not want to. It needs it. That looks pretty dang good. Bet we could take this to the back seats as well, and the door panels. But we won't, we'll leave that up to the uh, other channels. If you wanna watch somebody cleaning vehicles, go search for the uh, amazing cleanliness. So much good, because I don't really care to clean this thing. If I'm gonna do anything, I'm gonna gut the whole interior and throw floor pans in it, but not happening. I think if you threw floor pans and carpet and really clean the inside up, this thing wouldn't be that bad of a car, probably. I think we should go for a ride. Maybe clean the windows a little bit. Oh, they ain't even that dirty. I'll wipe them down just a little bit. We gotta see what we're gonna run into. Oh, that windshield is real busted up, Doc. Did you notice that? Wasn't high on my priorities either. Oh, it smells so nice and citrusy in here now, though. Clean up that nice black horn ring. Oh, the horn don't work. Quick swipe on the old dash pad. Oh, it's kind of cracked up. What if they make replacement dash pads for these? That's the problem with the Buicks. They don't have the following that the Mustangs and the Camaros and the Challengers and everything does. You can't get a lot of Buick parts. I know the guy who bought the other one was trying to find quarter panels. And you don't buy a quarter panel. You just buy some patches for these things. All right, I think we're ready for the old test drive. It's time to carpe the diem. Carpe the diem. Seize the car. The seat's uh, not so good. Seize the carp. Well. Come on now, I gotta focus on Riviera and tilt. Hey, the oil light comes on and then it goes off, so that means we got oil. Pressurized. So when I was working on this thing, you look up at the bottom, don't swat me, you swat. It's swat. You look up at the oil pan on the side of the block and it's got like better blue paint than it should. So I think this thing was rebuilt at one point just based on the paint. Okay now. And it's got dorm and freeze plugs in it. Cross plugs, core plugs. Come on! I surrender. Alright, let's do this. I wish this seat had a floor underneath it. My dog knew how to tune a carburetor. Suppose they make floor pans for this thing? Probably not. Just about dropped my door clicker through the hole and said floor pans. They don't have a dome light up here. They're just in the the C pillars. Well, they got them down by your feet. 
pillars down here in the consolio. I am the great consolio! I am the great consolio! Well, the good news is it's got an armrest and an elbow rest. Oh, I'm so glad I cleaned this door panel. Aren't you disappointed you didn't clean yours? Oh, we're going to put some gas in. Sorry, forgot to do that. Got a squeak in the steering column. That's annoying. I'm guessing the old 401 nail head isn't real economical, so we don't want to run out of fuel. Good call on putting the fuel in, Duff. I almost missed that. I gotta put fuel in on that side. Do you wanna open the door? Cause I can't open it from the outside. You only open hoods? Gotcha. Well, Duff's off on a hunting excursion, so I guess if we start the car, maybe he'll come running. Just lights right off. Where you been? Out dogging around. I don't know if it's the exhaust that's super drony or the fact that we don't have any floors, but... Someday we're going to get a good Riviera dump. Maybe not good, but baby steps. They keep getting better and better. Come on, shift. It's not shifting, Duff. I bet this will fix it. We gotta open the vent on the fuel tank. We're good to go. Speaking of the marquee, I hope we don't blow one of these crappy 1982 tires. The brakes are good, but it's just the one tire that's really grabbing. Yeah, have you uh, stuck a windshield in this thing? Did some exhaust and brake work, tires? Got the right radiator, some new hoses. Give her a tune up and a carb kit. Cleaned up the interior and stuck some floors in it. This wouldn't be a bad car. Except you gotta hire somebody to put the glass in unless you're more capable than me. Which is entirely likely. 
Same deal with the exhaust, because I doubt they make a bolt-in kit. You have, you have to get a little help from your friends. It's chilly out there, Duff. You're fogging, and, you're fogging the thing up. I tried cracking Duff's window in it. It didn't want to go, so I didn't want to force it. She'll do a donut, Duff. No lights came on on the dash, so she must be good to go. What do you think, Duff? On to the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Without you amazing viewers, subscribers, 
we wouldn't be able to do this stuff. So appreciate it. Go check out our merch, Mortski.com. We got super warm beanies. We got super warm sweatshirts. We got regular warm and soft t-shirts. We got fender covers. We got magnetic can koozies. We got magnetic screwdrivers. We're gonna give away a couple of them glove box center console door prizes with uh, screwdriver purchases this month, this week, just this week. So whatever the dates are, Chin's gonna have them right here. We're gonna throw in some of those odds and ends in the, some lucky or unlucky purchase. So thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. Big Buicks, they're fun. On to the next one. Oh, we got another trailer full of freaking boxes to unload. Well, at least the ground's hard again today. Look at that, fresh skins. Fresh to the rib, anywho. We've got a big old 235 75 pickup tire on this side. It sits about right now in the back. She needed some more rubber rake. But you knew that's not where we were gonna leave you, right? Let's see if we can't do a burnout. I know we can do a burnout. I just need you guys to encourage me to do it. Can't hear ya. All right, that's all I needed. Let's do this. Not bad if I don't say so myself. Do say so myself? I don't know. That tire didn't make near as much smoke as the original one, but it'll do it. It's a radial. That must be why. Biases make the more smoke. It's an all season. All right, now we gotta get back to work. Or maybe I'll go do some burnouts on my own, but catch you guys next time. Well, we made her back. The seller is a pretty cool guy. He actually watches the show, so 
gave me a little bit of a discount. Maybe not because he watched the show, but because he felt bad for selling me this key. But anyway, yeah, got a pretty good deal. Talked to him for quite a while. He had some other stuff we looked at. Uh, he had some other stuff he's going to send me some pictures of. He told me some things to keep an eye out for. So, yeah, overall pretty good trip. This tire took air, but slid the whole way. So we got to get some tires that hold air, and we got to get the uh, brakes loose on this thing. Couldn't get the trunk open over there, but a couple miles down the road it came open. So I closed that. But, yeah, she's not that bad, not that good. Who knows? What do you think, Duff? Duff found a swamp to play in while we were there, so we got the inside of the tow pig all full of mud, because that's what we do. And this thing stinks. She is ripe. As you can tell, Duff's interested in it. But, we gotta do a couple other things, so we're not gonna rip into this thing right away. On the video, it'll be right away, but it's not gonna be right away, I don't think. Who knows? I gotta move some stuff around in the shop first, so. I don't know when we'll get back to this. We're leaving that window down, because it's terrible. And we could use some rain, so hopefully leaving the windows down will get us some rain. Oh, so when we had our four, when we had our four.